In 2012, I decided to rebuild the map of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask in Minecraft. Along with the help of a couple of friends, I managed to rebuild the map in its entirety in a little more than a year. We had built it all. Clock Town, the Four Regions, the Dungeons, even the inside of the moon. After we finished, the project was put to rest. We had achieved what we wanted and split up, looking for new challenges. Over the course of time, many other talented builders did the same thing, building their very own version of Termina. It was truly inspiring seeing different versions of the same map. However, all these builds, including mine, had one thing in common. They were static. Despite all of these builds looking incredible, after all, they were just something to look at. There was no way to interact with the map itself. Recently, I decided to change this and started something insane. This is Termina Craft. Craft is a project about turning a Nintendo 64 game fully playable in Minecraft. This includes NPCs, masks, enemies, and a lot more. This project has merely begun, and this series shall document my progress. If you want to stay up to date, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell. In case you want to help me out with this project, stick around until the end of this video. Minecraft has changed a lot since I initially started this project. Back when I started, there were no vanilla commands, no data packs, no armor stands. There were mostly just blocks and redstone. When I revisited my old map in 2020, I quickly came to think of a lot of new possibilities to make the map more immersive using command blocks. However, as I was playing around with these possibilities, I quickly found myself working with more than 100 command blocks and decided to switch over to the creation of my own data pack which led to even more possibilities. The deeper I went into the rabbit hole, the more I came to realize that I want to make the entire game playable. I am doing this on my own in my spare time, so having the entire game finished will most likely take several years, which is why I want to regularly share my progress with you using this YouTube series. In this very first episode, I will demonstrate a collection of a lot of prototypes of functionalities I have made. Keep in mind that all of what I'm about to show you is still under development and serves more as a proof of concept than anything else. The research pack for Termina Craft is a modified version of Koanuyuva's pack called Majora's Craft, which was sadly last updated two years ago. I took it up on myself to update the pack to version 1.16 and also modified quite a lot of textures and sounds. I also added custom 3D models, which will be covered later. I didn't create all of the new textures myself, however. A friend of mine, Fabian, helped me out with a lot of the new textures. They were also involved in the project back in 2012 and built amazing structures such as the moon and twin mold. They also got a YouTube channel and are an amazing artist, so make sure to check them out. A link to their YouTube channel can be found in the description below. Now let's dig into the core of the project, the custom data pack I am creating for this map. As stated before, 
I want to make the entire game playable from A to Z. As of now, the part I would consider quite playable is the beginning in the Lost Woods, right after Link loses Epona. I have implemented the colored mask animation where Link falls down the hole, as well as the transformation into a Deku, followed by meeting Tattle and using Deku Flowers to fly around. Right after arriving in Clocktown, the player is greeted with a familiar Dawn of a New Day message. That's right, the three day cycle works using three Minecraft days and the weather and music change based on the current day. Even the moon draws closer. As a prototype for animated Minecraft structures, I decided to start with the clock tower. Indeed, the clock tower's minutes and hours are always synced with the in-game time and can be seen turning from anywhere. Along with the Deku mask, the Zora and Goron mask are also in the game, but they do not have any particular powers yet. The Deku mask, however, lets the player shoot bubbles once they have magic and use Deku flowers to fly around. NPCs play a big role in Majora's Mask, and I am going to add NPCs as well to live up Clock Town. For now, I have only implemented the Trading Post Shopkeeper as well as the Banker. They are perfect examples of NPCs with many different dialogue options. Since Majora's Mask has quite a big collection of items and masks, I had to find some way to let players hold the entire Zelda inventory. Since the Minecraft vanilla inventory was too small, I decided to use a spigot plugin to find a workaround. The player can always right click a special item which opens up a GUI where they can select the items they want. In consequence, I had to rework the entire button management. In the Zelda game, the buttons displayed on the HUD have disjoint functionalities. In order to accommodate this, I gave each slot in the Minecraft hotbar the role of a specific button. When the player changes appearance, the item on the B button will change and the items on the A button are dependent of the player's environment. Another item I have added is the ocarina. Once right clicked, it will display its controls in the chat and the player can play any of the Zelda songs they like. Speaking of music, I am also implementing the music of the original game. While the sound effects I added correspond to those in the N64 version, I decided to turn the music into Noblog versions. Noblog music, however, has quite a few limitations, so I'm using a program called Noblog Studio to circumvent some of these problems. The Noblog song is then recorded and added as a sound effect to the Minecraft map. Now here's one of my favorite features. Pots and tall grass can be broken and drop familiar items. Most of these drops already work properly, meaning that they will give the player health or magic. To finish things off, I would like to show some of the custom models I've added so far. The deco flower, bigger torches, bigger lily pads, and my favorite, the beloved bubble hat cow. Aside from all of these features I'm implementing, I'm also planning on rebuilding many of the structures I've built back in 2012, either because they are newer, more suiting blocks for the structure, or I simply don't like the way it looks right now. Finally, I would like to credit some other people and mention the tools, plugins and other data packs I'm using for this project. The model for the hero's shield for instance is from a data pack from the WASD team. Another data pack I use is called ScoreTP by Reddit user Michelobia which is used for some of my effects. For the tools I'm using in this project, I rely on Blockbench, GIMP, Audacity, Noteblock Studio and Visual Studio Code for the data packs. Initially, I wanted to keep the whole map as vanilla as possible, but having interactable NPCs and custom GUIs was just too intriguing for me, which is why I decided to run this map as a server using Spigot plugins as well. A list of all the plugins can be found below, some of my favorites being Citizens 2 and Command Panels. And yes, you heard correctly, the map runs as a server, and my goal will be to release this project playable as a co-op adventure, but until the release, it's going to be a long way. So let us enjoy this long journey together. Join the Terminal Craft Discord right now and stay up to date. Talk with other Zelda, Minecraft and Data Pack fans. Discord is also the place to go if you want to collaborate. I'm always in need of some helping hands. Preferably, you know your way around Data Packs, have created some Minecraft textures before, or you're just really good at building. If you want to help me out with this project, 
join the Discord and hit me up. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to stay tuned for further episodes and see you next time.